good morning or afternoon or evening whenever you're watching this. Uh, today, I'm glad you're watching. I think maybe of most all the different ones I've given you, this one may be the best. I don't mean my, my delivery. I said, you know, what we're talking about is extremely important. But uh, it's amazing. I didn't even think we were going to do this section. Um, I thought we were all done when we did the one on the church. But uh, I know people have said, well, where do you get your ideas? Well, I, I really don't get my ideas. I think God gives me them um, because I don't have any preconceived whatever. And I was um, praying after we finished the one on the church and I felt really good at that. It's very important that that people realize just to go to church and not to pay attention and to listen and to act on it is very wrong. Uh, and that was what it about. So I was praying that. And as I was praying um, and thanking God that it went well and smooth and everything, um, a thought came to me. And the thought was, when I was a child and I was frightened, uh, the first horror movie, I guess you'd want to say, or whatever, where it caused me to throw my hands over my face. I'm thankful I didn't wet my pants. So that, that, that could have happened, you know, as a, as a young kid, uh, being so frightened because I never saw anything of horror or spooky ever. And then in a dark theater and all of that, but the um, the spooky thing that uh, I saw, uh, and this is amazing because God brought that to my attention. I was like, God, why are you bringing this to my attention? I'm praying and thanking you for about the church. And now here we are, uh, the first spooky movie I saw. And that spooky movie was Snow White. And it was the queen at the at the mirror. Uh, asking who was the most beautiful person and all that stuff came up in the mirror and all that and it freaked me out as a kid. Um, so I'll tell you, don't ask the mirror who's the most beautiful because you may be freaked out too <laughs> by the answer of the mirror. You know, when I look in the mirror, I sneak up on it and I don't know, there's some old man that lives in my mirror and no matter which way I approach it, he pops up with all his wrinkles and I'm going, can't you, where's the other guy? <laughs> but um, we're going to go back to that. That's where I was going to start with the, the idea of the mirror and all of that. But God gave me something first this morning as I was praying about what are we going to do and, and what's going to happen. Well, so I want to share this with you. Um, I was pastoring a church in Tacoma. It was my second church. And I was really dissatisfied with my walk with God. Now, you know, I was doing I was doing everything I was supposed to do and, and all, but something was not right. And so I begin to pray. So Lord, I don't know what's wrong, but there's got to be more to pastoring than this. Um, and as I was praying, um, I just said, Lord, whatever it takes, I want to change, but I don't know what to do. Well, anyway, I got through praying and this guy came into my life, Kent Bergsma. Kent Bergsma was a MAF pilot in training, Christian mission uh, the, for Aaron Jaira. He's going to be flying to the tribes, taking food and, and letters and things like that to the tribes and to the kids from the tribes to the school and all that is what Kent was going to do. Well, Kent didn't go to my church. And Kent wasn't even from Tacoma. He was from above Seattle is where he actually lived. So how we met, I have no idea. But he was a godsend. And uh, I met Ken. And 
both of us were dissatisfied with where we were spiritually. And that's kind of neat when you have somebody to kind of take that journey together. And uh, so we began that journey, Kent and I. Uh, and the, one of the things that we had stumbled on in scripture was fasting. And neither one of us fasted. Um, and we thought, well, maybe there's a point in fasting. So I bought some books on fasting that were out there by good Christian authors. You know, what's the benefit of fasting? What can you expect when you fast and so on? And so Kent and I uh, started fasting together and experiencing and taking notes and sharing our experiences. Well, I want to leave that for a minute uh, that if you are like we were, do what we did, pray and say, God, there's got to be more to the Christian life. Somehow, you know, I feel like I'm all around it, but not in it. I know there's more, but I don't know how to get there. And I don't want to go weird and get strange, but how can I go deeper with you? I want that. It was my heart's cry. And we cried that together. Well, what's the story gets a little more interesting. Uh, Kent left uh, to, to be a missionary, and uh, I'm going to still be a pastor. Well, Kent was a missionary overseas in Irangira, going to the tribes and so on. Well, I went to a conference. How I met this family, I don't know. I am sure they can tell you how we met, but this family became very significant in our ministry, Bill Fay and his wife. They were missionaries in Irangira, and we were talking, and they said, oh, we had this pilot. We loved him. He would come and spend Christmas with us. And so it was Kent Bergsma. Now, they, I am in, uh, at that time, in Washington, they are, I forget where do they live, uh, in the middle, Pennsylvania. Yeah. So they live in Pennsylvania, and, and Kent is somewhere else. And here we meet, and we have a friend, a mutual friend. And we just got so excited that I knew him, and I asked him, well, they said, oh, he was such a godly man, and he had such a walk with God because of that. Yeah, we worked on that. We wanted, we wanted to be that. But it, you don't, that it's just wanting to be doesn't happen. It, it, there's a lot of work involved and so on. So anyway, um, this message is, is for you. Um, if you're there, if you feel that, you know, there's more to Christianity than am I experiencing. And I'm not talking about some weird experience. I'm just talking about in-depth a sense of God's presence with you and he's there and he's leading and guiding and directing and so on. Well, getting back now to uh, Cinderella, uh, not Cinderella, but uh, Snow, White. Snow White. It's Snow White and her friends. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll give you a little freebie here. Uh, when I was in grammar school, further in grammar school, my cousin worked at Disney Studios. And she arranged for us to have, I mean, a school. I was in school, maybe third or fourth grade, to go to the Disney Studios. And she knew all the artists. And I met the people that drew Dopey and, and how they tried to figure out how can we make Dopey Dopey but cute. <laughs> And grumpy, grumpy, but cute. You know? And it was amazing to be with these artists and see how they sketch on paper and put all kinds of lines that they're moving a box. Because when they go then, they have to do every move of the box has to be drawn and all of that. But anyway, I saw all of that. And that brings us back to Snow White. Uh, I'm sure she's in the Bible somewhere, maybe in the appendix. <laughs> but... Uh, there's something 
that I, I, I wanted to share with you because I thought, why did God bring that up to me? Of all things, I wasn't ever, I didn't even think about watching that when I was, I figured Paul looked, I was five or six when I saw, because that's when it was released in Los Angeles, and that's when I had to see it. So why did God bring that up to me? Because we just finished the thing with church, and why Snow White? <laughs> but I, I know that, you know, you don't question God. You say, God, I'm kind of slow on the uptake. Of, you know, show me what you're trying to tell me. And the key to all of that is in the book of James. Now, James should be your favorite book, especially if your name is James. So you want to go to a book that God named after me? <laughs> the book of James. <clears throat> I want to go because I'll tell you, there's some things in this book that if you will really focus on it, can totally change your life and walk with God. Um, now, <clears throat> he's writing to both men and women, which is good. Look at uh, James chapter one, verse 19. My dear brothers and sisters, understand this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, and slow to anger. For the human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Therefore, ridding yourselves of all mort mortal filth and evil, so is so to pre prevalent, humbling receive the impact of the word which is able to save your soul. Ah. I'm stumbling all over that. Um, but the idea here is the word of God and the importance of the word of God, not just to hear it, but actually to act on it. And that's where you come, where verse 22 and 23 are extremely important in a Christian's life. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. So here we get back to the deceiving. That's what we were looking at. How do I deceive myself? Well, it's not only going to church, it's in my Bible reading. So, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like someone who's looking in his own face in a mirror. Oh, mirror again. <laughs> this is where God wanted me to come. I'm why he brought Snow White up so we could go to James. Uh, so <clears throat> it's a mirror. So God's word is a mirror. For a man looks at himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of person he was. That's very, very dangerous. God says that his word is a mirror for men and women. And as we look in the mirror, we can see really where we are. That's what I started with this guy and I were not satisfied with where we were. It wasn't because there was some horrible sin that we need to get over, you know, drugs or whatever. No, it was we weren't what we could be. We, we weren't what it, the Bible seemed to indicate what a Christian would be and what a Christian life would be like. And we were like looking in from the outside. God, we, we, we want to, you know, we want the whole baptism. <laughs> Just get us all wet. Uh, and, and so he says, when God, you look in the mirror like the wicked queen did, and walk away and forget what you saw. I don't know how she could forget. I couldn't. <laughs> what I saw as a poor kid. You know, you're laughing. I'm saying, you know, years ago, uh, kids were not exposed to all kinds of horror stuff at all. So just a little bit was like frightening because you weren't exposed to it. 
today, I don't know if you could even freak a kid out today with anything, with all the stuff they're watching. But the one who looks intently into that mirror, you're looking intently, the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. So we are to look into God's liberty, into his word. And it's if you're going to look, you've got to act on what you see. You've got to act on what God is going to reveal to you. And it can be some wrinkles also. <laughs> As you're looking, God can show you, yes, this needs, you need to work on this. You need to deal with that. So when I'm looking and God speaks to me and God shows me, I am not to be a forgetful hearer, but a doer of what God showed me, what I need to work on, what needs to wait. And God said, if you will practice and begin to work on and pray about the very thing I showed you as you looked into the mirror, the person will be blessed in what he does. So today it's all about being blessed. You want to be blessed? Just get alone with the Lord. Start reading his word and let it speak to you and show you where you are. And not only does the scripture usually show us where we are, but it shows us what we can do. What, what do we need to add uh, to do? Because it's, it's one thing to see something that needs correcting, but without God's help, instead of correcting it, I make it worse. You know, I need to be led by the spirit of God, not only in what's wrong, but what's my part in undoing what's wrong. Because See, if anyone thinks he's religious without controlling his tongue, his religion is useless and he's deceiving himself. Pure and undefiled religion before God the Father is this, to look after the orphans and the widows and their distress and keep thyself unstained from the world. The idea of having compassion for those that are less fortunate and in the process don't get caught up in the system. Um, and that's the sad part. So often when people go to change the system, they become such a part of the system, you can't even tell that once they weren't a part of the system. And one of the things that I found that was important was at, at first, if you, if you go to a Bible college and all that, and and I've taught it, I'm so I'm a little bit familiar. Uh, they teach you the negatives too. I mean, I don't believe this and they, all of this, and that's you don't study air to know the truth. You study the truth, and you will figure out the air when something is contradictory to what God's word says. Right away, you pick up on it. I mean, I know you've heard the story of that when uh, they work with people are going to work with a lot of money that they uh, don't, um, they just give them real money because immediately the feel and the look and all of that, of that which is counterfeit stands right out. It just doesn't fit. And so don't study air, study the truth. Remember the scripture says the truth will set you free. And I want you to be free indeed, free to become the person God wants you to be, you know, free that is looking in the word. Okay, now let me give you whatever kind of a reading thing I give you. It's just an idea. You don't have to follow it or whatever. But I think that for reading, just reading scripture, I would pick I, I, I always read a gospel. I always am reading through the gospel. 
Jesus' words and so on. That's very important. His teachings, his life, and all of that. So you may want to read Mark because Mark is short uh, and you'll get through it quicker. Now, if you're younger, you'll love that. <laughs> uh, but also, for a lot of people, they love the Psalms because the Psalms sort of open my heart up to God. It helps me somewhat to understand what worship is all about, the Psalms. And so you can read five Psalms and one chapter of Proverbs because Proverbs tells us how to get along with people. Um, and Proverbs is, is really wonderful. I had read Proverbs for seven years straight. Every, every day for seven years, I read a chapter of Proverbs. And then the Bible college said, would you teach a summer course on Proverbs? I said, wow, <laughs> it's funny. I prepared for this for seven years. I'm ready to go. And we took themes. You know, what was a wicked man? What was a wicked woman? What is a godly man or a godly woman? We took these themes, so we went through Proverbs. But I think that that's balanced. I mean, uh, I know that you should be reading. You know, if you, if you read everything that everybody tells you to read, you won't read anything. It's like, it's way too much. I got to read Romans and I got to read the end times to find out, am I going to be left or am I left behind or am I going to be taken um, you know, or whatever, all of that. And I just, uh, right now I'm saying to get back, to get back to look what he's talking about here in James, looking in the word, Mark will help you to hear and what did Jesus believe and what did he teach? What was important to him and what should be important to us? And then Psalms is a way of worshiping God because sometimes I, I can't say it like the psalmist does, but I can say what the psalmist says because it's so beautiful. You know, uh, be worshiping God and all of that. You get a lot of that in the Psalms. And then Proverbs tells me how to get along with different kinds of people. And eventually, if you have some really hurting people in your life, read Proverbs, you'll find them. They'll be on one of the pages. You go, oh, yeah, that's, that's Susie. <laughs> how did God know about her? She wrote all about her here. But uh, you find out about that and how to respond to those. Uh, so I'm really encouraging because remember what he's saying. One of the worst things you can do is to read scripture and walk away and forget what God told you. Don't read it. You're better off not reading it than rejecting it. When you reject truth, what do you have? Error and lies. You're opened up, really opened up to the enemy because you, you don't want the truth. So when you read scripture, ask God, just say, God, help me to remember what I read. And read what, what um, Bible, I'm not going to tell you what Bible to read or what um, translation, um, but what does your church have? You know, what are they using at your church? What are they pushing? Uh, we like everyone to, to be reading in this scripture or whatever. So the idea is, is reading scripture, parking on it, and then praying about it. Don't forget what God is saying. God's word is a light unto my path, a lamp unto my feet, and all those kinds of things that talks about what God's word is. So I, I, I can't tell you from my heart that the most wonderful thing that could ever happen from these little deals we're doing is that you started reading the Bible for the purpose of acting on it. But God shows me, I'm going to say, okay, God, I'm not sure how do I do this? Like fasting. I didn't know. Does that mean you don't eat for a week or what, what do you do? And God can lead you. And he did. He, he led us in fasting. But I'll tell you, 
we got together the first day we fasted and then we were going to say what happened that day people pushed food at us the I would go to these people's houses. They never had a piece of cake, never had a nice piece of pie. You know, here I'm calling on them. Oh, pastor, <laughs> here's some tea and the coffee or, or pie and whatever. I said, I can't believe it. All the food, I'm not going to eat. And all the food is pushed at me the very first day. And he said, well, Jim, since I'm studying how to put airplanes together, they don't push food at you. But my wife teaches home economics. So I came home and she put on the refrigerator door, surprise, and in there she made him chocolate eclairs, his favorite. And here was a whole bunch of chocolate eclairs. And he said, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> but it's, I'm telling you, it's amazing that when you want to look at God's liberty and see your face, don't be like the queen. You know, look and say, okay, what can I do? What do I need to do? What do I need to change? God can guide you. If if everyone listens to me would start reading their Bible regularly, then what we're doing here was was absolutely worth it. Because that's what's important. It's not what I say, it's what God says. And how do I put feet to what he says? How can I you know, maybe you say, well, I don't see the poor like we read in that verse. Okay, but what about around you? What about people that are hurting? You know, or whatever, how God can lead you. God needs people who are willing to be led to help and come alongside others. Some people are, I don't know today with the hospital, but there are some people that are really gifted with the sick. I'm not really gifted with the sick. Um, you know, I mean, I don't go in saying I've seen worse. That's not me. But uh, but I know some that have said that. Well, I've seen worse. Uh, <laughs> but the, the idea that, that that's to be a chaplain like your friend Larry, that's mm-hmm. a gift from God mm-hmm. to have that. But we all have to visit the sick. You know, we need to encourage others that are down and discouraged. But if we're in the word, you'll be amazed if you're reading scripture and you go out and you go calling on somebody that that promise that you got in scripture is exactly what they needed. It wasn't just for you. It's for you to pass on. They needed to hear that. So don't be a forgetful hearer of scripture. Because today, if there ever was a time in our country that we need people to live out Christianity, it needs to be. People need to see it. Not preaching, you know, because you preach at people, you know, you ought to repent and whatever. And that's okay. But what I'm saying is they need to see Christianity in shoe leather. They need to see people living out their faith, not just standing against this, standing against that. It's all negative, but it's positive. Christianity is a positive thing because if you take a stand with the Lord, then you're going to have to take a stand against what isn't the Lord's. I mean, it's a different thing. It's it's not I'm out there again, everything, but what am I for? And then encouraging those that are taking stands, others that feel just all alone you know, with their thinking uh, and their burdens in their heart. So let's pray and pray that if you are uh, a Bible reader, that we encourage you. But if you've gotten away from it and drifted, uh, you'll come back and start, remember, in Mark and Psalms and Proverbs. If that's way too much, start in Mark, at least in Mark. Uh, Because just to read the Old Testament and not the New, to me, it's not good. It's not enough. You've got to read. We base scriptural teachings on the words of Christ. We've got to be reading the gospel. What did Jesus say? What is God telling us? And so on. The others are wonderful, but it all can fit together and be beautiful. Father, I just pray. You know, I'm so amazed that when I was thanking you for the the last program we did, 
that you brought Snow White to my mind. I'm going, what in the world is going on with my walk with you that I'm walking through Disney stuff <laughs> mentally? <laughs> but he was, but I know what he was saying. He's saying, Logan, get get back to that. You know, she looked in the mirror and forgot what she saw. That's scriptural. That's in James. And he said, don't let that happen to you. When you look in the mirror, don't forget what God reveals. And so, Lord, I pray, give all of us a greater hunger and thirst for righteousness, Lord. And we just thank you for your word. And the entrance of your word not only gives life, but it gives light in a darkened world. And it seems, Lord, that in our country, the light is slowly going out and we just need your light. We need your light on our path so we can make the right choices. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Hold on. <clears throat>